And it's Sunday, November the 15th, and it's uh, blog 13, Sarah Rachel Adams. Thank you. Isn't it it's strange that it's 13, blog 13 too? Um, ha I had a very strange uh, uh, 13th, by the way. Uh, today, I think that I just want to speak about a couple of things that have been on my mind and a couple of things that I've experienced recently. Um, I, let me think. I guess this one I'll just kind of like ramble on again about all sorts of things that I experienced. Uh, we just did a healing and there were some ET presents that were here, so that was very, very nice. Um, I, today I'd probably be happy resting in bed because it's cold outside and it's Sunday and I like laying in bed on Sundays and having my hot chocolate and that's usually my thing. <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, uh, tell myself, you know, even though you want to do that, you have to do this um, because I know it, that uh, it does, you know, it does get information out that is important and I guess I, because the experiences I have, I, I think that, you know, I don't say a lot of them. I'm like, okay, you know, this happens to me. I keep it in my mind. I keep it in my heart. And I'm like, uh, why, why should I speak about it? It's something divine. You know, I've always uh, went on through life with my own spiritual experiences. And they're very important to me. They're very, they're like gems. And they're worth more than anything that I could possibly ever um, have you know it's it's there is a difference of having objects that are worth money and there's a much difference of having experiences that are so divine that you cannot explain in words and those are what I wish the world was awake to and that they were aware that they have a soul and that they can also tap into these sort of experiences because it really really makes you see the world different, differently and it really shows you that there are beautiful things like angels and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think where I'm going to start in uh, speaking about this stuff. Um, that's happened to me recently. Sometimes when I uh, do blogs like this I feel a bit scrambled. I'll be clear-headed and perfectly fine I can lead a conversation and stuff. Then I get to do the blog. I feel all scrambled, so I know that there's all sorts of presence that is interfering with speaking about this stuff because in a, the world that is asleep it is perfectly controllable, whereas a world that is awakened to this stuff, it's very, it's, it's like empowering humanity, it's empowering souls. So you have the sort of uh, factions that want humanity to wake up and you have the negative factions that want to keep humanity asleep so that they can use them as energy batteries. So during these vlogs I feel like there's interference and the first time I spoke out about this stuff I, I was pretty much told not to by a whole bunch of my guardian angels because I was told that I would be targeted and I was targeted and it was um, something to go through. Uh, not a very, very nice experience, but definitely a life lesson. I wanted to start off with speaking about the Paris incident. Uh, you know, I got so much, so much information on that. Uh, the day it happened, I just, on the, I, I remember that day I was feeling sort of very uneasy. And I was hoping that everything would be okay. And it was funny because as I was going through the day, I had a very, very uneasy and very bad gut feeling. And then I didn't know about the incident, incident until the next morning because I, I really don't keep up with news, but it started to sort of come on my news feed and stuff like that. When it comes on my social media news feed, when lots of people post about it, then I, I become uh, aware of it. I try to stay away from the news as much as I can because I feel like it's it, to entrap energy and sort of a soul entrapment in a way and you get caught up with worrying about all sorts of things and I know there are definitely terrible things going around the world uh, that are going on around the world but the problem is is that uh, 
you know, if you continuously, continuously put your energy into worrying about those things, there's really no positivity that comes from that. With the Paris incident, I, um, I think it's very symbolic. I, I'm still putting some of these things together. But I did find an article about a, a cup that was stolen that had to do with the Holy Grail. So I, uh, I think there's something there that was in the news definitely the same day. Not only that, there was another article that was in the news, and I wish I could pull it up uh, uh, right now. Now I did post it on my social media. It was about how physicists can make time, can warp time. They can literally make time bubbles and they can go ahead and, 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 and twist and play around with light frequencies. Now, you know, I guess because so many people were looking at the Paris incident, they didn't realize some of the other stuff in the news and this always happens. This is a very important, important piece of information that they have let out because of the fact that they are saying literally that they can change the timelines, that they can do time bubbles and they can warp time and they can act, do all of this stuff. And it's literally in the news that they can do this sort of stuff. So I don't think it, too many people became aware of this because they were focused on the Paris thing. It's very interesting that um, the Paris incident happened around the same time they let up that piece of information and the same time the, the article about the Grail came out. I uh, think the best thing to do with these things, and lots of people, the interesting thing too is a lot of people say, it's false flags and then a lot of people are saying it's real. This is my perspective on it. You know, it's it's there to create chaos, it's there to create harm, and it's there to create mass amounts of panic and whether you believe it's real or not, m most of the world is are on that frequency of believing that it's real and it's affecting them. It's affecting them whether you think it's fake and set up or whether it's real. They are not awake like you, so it's still causing the mass trauma. That's what we need to take care of rather than arguing over whether it's fake or not. It's achieving the same, same outcome that they want. So uh, the thing is, is about uh, almost doing damage control when stuff like this happens. I think it was very, it's very interesting. It was done in Paris and because years ago I had tied that Eiffel Tower into um, some very interesting things. I believe that the Eiffel Tower is used as a antenna. Yes, a very large antenna. I think that uh, s sort of it's being that the Eiffel Tower is being used in um, in the projection of a different sort of um, time stuff. It has to do with time travel. And I studied this years ago because I had some incident with the Eiffel Tower and I think that this whole incident has to do with some sort of fluctuation in time or something like that. The Eiffel Tower is basically a large antenna and nobody realizes this and it's almost like a cosmic antenna. And I had dreams years and years ago, back when I was living in France, of how it was literally uh, um, sort of helping keep some sort of time bub some sort of time bubble or something around the earth. It's one of the monuments. And I believe there are different monuments around the world that are being used for this, sort of like to keep the, a sort of um, a, a sort of bubble around earth so that that's one of the things it was used for and I do believe that it was used it's used to send information back and forth and it's made so large because of the fact that it is being used as an antenna but it's being used as a cosmic antenna to uh, uh, communicate with many many other beings and other frequencies and also other plant planets and other systems so I do believe that the Eiffel Tower is being used for that I also saw that there was some sort of time travel that was happening with the Eiffel Tower. So this really, really interested me because at the same time, they let out this article about the, the uh, sort of like where physicists can 
play with uh, light rays and, and, and do sort of warp with time and stuff and play with time and things like that. So it started to become um, a bit evident to me that there's some sort of um, a, a time thing here. Also, you have to realize that it's called the Eiffel Tower. And you think about the tower in the, uh, the tower in the, um, the tarot card deck. You have the tower. And you think about the Tower of Babel and when the Tower of Babel fell. So I, uh, I was also sort of uh, thinking about the movie They Live and the, um, how he would go on those buildings and he would see those antennas, I think antennas and satellites and stuff, and they were helping project the holographic system. I believe the Eiffel Tower is part of that. I don't believe that it's just a monument at all, like I just stated. And uh, so this whole incidence is like September 11th. Uh, it is uh, with, the, with the towers going down, the two towers, you have the, 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 the same thing replaying out in a different way now. The thing is, is that they, the, 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 the t twin towers were shown in Back to the Future. There's some sort of time loop that was going on there. And now we have the Paris being tied into this time loop somehow with uh, the whole Eiffel Tower. So I started to, um, because it's, it was, it's used in somewhat the same way as uh, the Twin Towers were being used. Uh, the, I believe the Twin Towers were being used as a sort of cosmic gateway you know, they were being used like that. Um, what would be interesting is to look on that day, even the day before or, and day after, what um, celebrities were there, uh, uh, senators, uh, important people of importance, to look who was there. Because by looking at that and also to really, really look at the news around the world, why that happened on that day, because there's hints of that ties everything together, you can get a lot out of um, finding the articles like I did about this whole warping time thing. You can get a lot by looking through the news that nobody's looking at. So I do suggest you can get more information by doing that. Um, I do believe that the Eiffel Tower is also sort of done like, it's sort of a metallic pyramid. And it's really funny because in many fairy tales or many stories, you always have the tower. And um, there's something with, I know this is what happened and whether, like I said, it was a false flag or not, it's very symbolic. And it's very symbolic it happened in Paris where the tower is. And uh, it hadn't been lit up from since September 11th that I heard. I read about this earlier. Um, the thing is, is that I believe that the veil that is um, surrounding humanity, this holographic veil that is keeping them from accessing uh, um, divine consciousness, I believe that that's being slowly, uh, it's coming down. And this is symbolic of it. So what they're doing is they're, they're creating this chaos as much as they can to pull energy before this veil comes down because they're very afraid because you know when it comes down the sort of division then everybody will be awake to things and they won't be able to get any more energy so they're trying to feed off of humanity as much as they can and these are their last these are their like almost um, cries of desperation by doing these things um, Interestingly enough, everybody keeps saying, you know, everybody's, blam everybody's blaming everybody right now, as usual. <laughs> you know, you've got everybody is attacks the Zionist or attacks whatever, and probably a lot of people are going to be mad at me for saying this. But, you know, in all sincerity, it's not the different peoples around the world that are in back of this. 
It's unseen forces. And this is what we need to understand. And to sit there like a child and point at each other, you know, oh, it's you, no, it's you. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And we need to stop that sort of behavior. I think that we need to grow into our divine selves and we need to realize that we are battling something that is unseen. And yes, it can affect people and it can make people do terrible things, but we shouldn't be damning whole nations for this. We need to look into things much, much deeper. If you call yourself an awakened person, a spiritual person, you should be better than to point your fingers at entire nations and call them evil because of the fact that maybe the shooters or the bombers or whatever came from there. This is all a ploy to get everybody to fight like little children. They want a third world to break out. This is their plan. They've done this on many other planets. This is the same forces that move through it. These are the same forces that uh, other planets that had civilizations had to battle with. I believe that this all ends on Earth, and this is the time that humanity wakes up, and this is the time that they realize that they have a parasitic consciousness that are feeding on them and making them sort of like children that are fighting among each other so then they can absorb that sort of energy. We need, the best thing we can do in this instant is to awaken to our divine selves and to not play into these things. And we also need to stop pointing fingers. Like I said, we need to realize is that as these things happen and as, uh, you know, more and more and more that the world is waking up, people are waking up every single day that there are things, there are definitely terrible, terrible things happening, but they're a bit, um, how can I put it? They're a bit sort of set up to absorb energy and mass feed of energy. So people are already waking up to this. And this is a very, very good thing. Um, we need to go steps further than that, I think. I think that <laughs> I need to figure out how to say this because I sort of have a stream of consciousness that I tap into and sometimes it's hard it's very hard to do it on camera and sometimes I you know it's it's a it's a sort of a gem and I have it if all the time with me and then sort of you know it's harder to tap into on camera because I think that it's um it's a bit like in the back <laughs> like it tries i it's a bit it a bit is hidden you might say it, it hides itself a bit um you know i um you, do you want to stop it a second then just start it off okay so to continue on um i just took a bit of a break because of the fact that sometimes it becomes overwhelming. I was speaking about people pointing fingers and I really think that that needs to stop and I wanted to get that point across that we're battling unseen things and everybody fighting like children about it being each other's faults is absolutely ridiculous. And I think uh, being a mature awakened person, sh you should not do that. Um, Okay, so I want to continue about monuments, and I think I'm devoting a lot of time in this video blog to speaking about monuments because it's it's very very important to me. When I was uh, when I got to the United States, and you know, I was in the United States as a short for a short period when I was a very young child. Um, I was. Uh, having these dreams, one of the dreams that I had, one of the dreams that I had was um, this, it was uh, the earth speaking to me and she showed me the different monuments around the world and she said these monuments, they hold, help hold humanity in this prison. They also help hold earth, Gaia herself in a prison. They are put on specific points to um, hold her in a sort of prison and she is so angry about it. She's so angry at being held in that prison by these monuments. They have, because the earth is alive, they have figured out where to put these monuments so that they hold her in a prison. 
She showed me that she would destroy the monuments. She showed me she would do earthquakes and she would rip these monuments apart. And as she did, that she would be released. Um, I think it's very interesting that there's a sort of a thing going around of the Eiffel Tower upside down. So I think that is quite interesting. So something definitely did happen on an energetic scale in Paris. And that's what I'm trying to um, say. I know that it's being put uh, to the mass consciousness as something that's not good. Possibly on that day, there was some sort of energy release too. I notice where there's uh, energy releases, there can be some trauma because you have to realize it's almost like, think about having a bottle of uh, Perrier water and shaking it. It has to have a release. Well, when energies are held down like that, when energies are, when the earth is suppressed, she has to have a release and she will release. That's the thing. And for the better good of all humanity, I believe there was some sort of energy release on that day. And I do believe that um, they were trying to counteract that with what happened. Uh, there's many, many reasons of why they wanted to do that. There's, they can, by doing, uh, setting up uh, certain different incidents, they can change timelines, they can do stuff like that. Um, they can affect the earth, they can do all sorts of stuff. They can, like I said, vamp the mass, masses and things like that. What I did want to say is that you want to check out the people who were there when the, this, uh, this happened. The reason is, is that the government is using what I call uh, um, psychic setups. These, let me see how I can explain this. People who can infiltrate the minds of crowds or the minds of even the perpetrators and then make them carry out these acts. Um, it's very, very easy to do for an advanced psychic. Uh, many of the, the, the psychic assets that the, well, the government uses, including the United States and some other countries, are so advanced they can either, like I stated on my last videos, they can stop your heart, they can do all sorts of stuff to you. Um, they can even help, they can create cancer in you. They, what they do is only, the only way they can do that, I was talking with my friend about this earlier, is if you have some sort of karmic lower energies. So think about people, they can access pretty much anybody who isn't awake and who is just like, has lower karmic energies, they can access them and then use them to carry out things. And I think that some of this stuff that's being done or these bombers and stuff are being used like that. It's not actually the people themselves, but they're being psychically infiltrated and used for the purpose. So that means you can do th this to a target from afar. You don't even have to be in the same country, but it is much easier for them to use people who are in the same um, city or stuff like that. So you might want to look into who was in Paris around the time of the incident because of that. Uh, there's always telltale signs of, if it's a setup, there's always telltale signs because there'll be specific people there. Uh, you might want to look if there were any, uh, any psychics, any spiritual teachers or anything like that and see what sort of was happening on that day. I always, um, I always know that they send certain people into Target. So it's very, 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 very intricate. I think it's the movie Push, in the movie Push. See, because I can do this sort of stuff, in the movie Push, it's, uh, it explains all of this stuff. It explains how they're using different psychics and stuff to do different terrorists sort of like carry out different terrorist things so that they can achieve what's wanted. And that's what's being done right now. The person, people who carry out these things may necessarily not even have wanted to do it from self-will, but because they were being used as a, um, I guess you could, would say a patsy, would patsy, they, I think they call it a patsy. Uh, they're being used as a patsy. You have to realize is that uh, keeping humanity asleep it's perfect to use so many of them as patsies because they because they don't know what's going on. So many of these setups are patsies too, by the way. Um, the patsy is usually a person who is not very healthy or not very, um, isn't a person who is very, 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 uh, it, you know, well or very, very um, c 
connected with themselves. They always like using patsies who are either drug addicts, who are trauma victims or stuff like that, who have had bad childhoods or things like that because the uh, uh, um, energetic aura has already been literally shattered in pieces so they're easy to access and to use and to play with mentally. There's, there's literally no barrier to access in them. Um, so I did want to say it's very important to look at what, um, if there were any high officials from what countries, any countries or whatever that were there to try to see if this was some sort of setup like that. There are a couple of things. One, yes, there's the false flag thing. I really think something happened energetically. So I'm going towards more that this was a patsy sort of setup. Um, you know, I was looking at James Holmes by the way, that was used as a patsy. He doesn't, he doesn't even have his mind there. And um, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, he, he, he doesn't even know what's going on. If you take a look at the picture, and if you're somebody like me who can see and sense soul energy, he doesn't even look like his soul is there. So he was the perfect patsy to be used. Um, so then there's the people saying that was just carried out and there's real terrorists and stuff like this. Yes, there are a lot of terrorists in the world. Terrorists as in I mean that people who have been terrorized, so they are terrorists to others. And um, they're not, they definitely will be the ones to lash out. But I do not believe that th those are the ones that are doing these things. I believe that these are set up patsies, like I stated. And it's being sort of framed to make everybody sort of fight, like say, no, it's that country, no, it's that country, because it's per because it's perfect for them. Um, to go to continue back to the monuments and how they're keeping Earth in this sort of holographic prison. Um, Earth told me she would rebel against that, and she wouldn't break them apart and shatter them, and get rid of them so that she could cleanse herself and become free. Now she becomes, becomes free, humanity becomes free. And there's a sort of a um, relationship between Earth and humanity. Humanity has to do the best it can and Earth, she does the best she can. So there's a sort of like uh, um, mutual help when it comes to both of them. Earth is definitely trying to help out, but she wants definitely wants humanity to step it up. I was earlier when I was getting a healing, she told me, you know, you can heal yourself by taking the four elements. So I'm going to look for some deep sea salt water. She was like earth and uh, water, fire element, which is of course I get from the sun. And then she said earth, water and air. So, you know, breathing oxygen, doing breathing exercises, taking, uh, I take uh, should, should you let Shigillate, if that's how you pronounce it, it's got fulvic and humic acids in it, and it's it's really it's just earth, literally earth, um, sort of supplement. And then I'm going to find some deep sea water to go ahead and take. That way I can balance all the elements in my body because I'm working towards that. I really think during this time that that's what we need to work for, towards balance in our our body because we are definitely connected to the earth. We need to do prayer and we need to meditate and we ne need to sit down and literally uh, the, a great exercise is to imagine heart, hearts being opened around the world. Imagine just a sort of like a flower, a heart opening. You know, I close my eyes sometimes and I see, I can sense like souls around the a world and I, I just imagine their heart just op opening like a flower. And it, it, I think things like that really, really do a lot. You know, I have people who say prayer doesn't do anything. I'm sorry, I, I've prayed and people have got healed. So, so it's like prayer does work, but you have to put the intent and heart into it. If you're just sitting there like babbling a few words, it's not going to work. It's about will and intent and faith and all sorts of stuff like that. And to truly care, to truly care is very important. Uh, we can help the earth in that, those sort of things. By doing those sort of things, we can help the earth to elevate itself. Uh, on a vibrational level because she, that's what she's doing right now. You imagine she's slowly sort of ascending a higher in vibration, you know, and she's having uh, sort of, right now, sort of the, um, how can I put that? She's having this, re, she's having this reconnect with humanity because humanity is waking up 
to Earth and that she's a being that's alive. So there's this sort of reconnect and recoming together of Earth and her people. So it's a very, very beautiful thing. And um, I want to say that instead of sitting there and worrying and arguing and stuff, there are much better things to do. And, you know, we can decode this stuff and we can realize that all of this stuff is being set up also to mess with us who are awakened because they're trying to put every just everybody in chaos. They want everybody to be arguing thing and stuff like that. They just want mass sort of like war in the end because if they have war, they then they can massively, massively feed. And that's what we're trying to prevent. And, um, you know, I saw this sort of stuff happening when I was like 15 years old. I would have visions and think, now it's happening and think, wow, you know what? I've seen this stuff when I was really, really young and I see how it's all coming together now. And I understand why I have deja vu a lot too. And it's telling me not to get pulled into all of this sort of like stuff, but to continue on your spirit, my spiritual path. And this is what everybody needs to do. They will need to continue on trying to improve um, themselves every day, you know, trying to step it up higher and trying to uh, really, really connect with their souls. And uh, I feel like, you know, I was talking about soulless people and um, because I had a, a couple experiences with some soulless people and just literally people who didn't have any souls. And I'm very good, you know, at accessing people. I can do this. And, you know, I, somebody said to me, oh, is, do, do you think it's like running over people's boundaries to access them? Well, usually people around me know that that sort of comes with the territory because of how I am. So, like, if you're going to be my friend and close to me, you know, you know, be, you can expect that I am going to check you out on every single level, you know, because I'm like that. Who I allow in my um, field, in my aura, you know, and it's considering that it's divine to me, that my soul's divine, and who I allow my soul space, I, I believe that as a, um, as a, uh, how can I put this? Sometimes words <laughs> are hard. To, it's hard to find words because I mix. I grew up partially in France, so I mix up uh, just all sorts of <laughs> words sometimes. Um, uh, sort of. Uh, um, you owe yourself to make sure that what is in your presence is not uh, being harmful to you. And that's why I check people out, to make sure that they're bringing positive energies into my presence. So I just don't go and access random people. And I definitely, if I'm working with somebody, I do ask, ask them. And I also say I always uh, adhere to universal guidelines of not taking energy and doing things like that which would be, is very, very terrible thing. So in accessing some people that had uh, come close to me, I realized that soulless people do exist. And one day when I was in France, I went to this magic shop. And I, um, back then, my mother, she, she had a, a jewelry store. And, uh, she, you know, she, we were locked away a bit. And I could only be in the store and like sell to customers and she had me like locked away in there. And I remember if she would go off somewhere like that and have a nap or something. My brothers were really cool and sometimes they'd watch the shop and I'd run down the street and go somewhere. And I'd seen this magic shop and I wanted terribly to go to it and I just waited for ages and then I was able to go to this magic shop. I was in there and um, it was really amazing because that's when I really got to see a whole bunch of stones and see a whole bunch of things like that and test a, a pen, pendule, pendule, pend, pendule, pendule, pendulum, there you go, pendulum. So I, I was able just to hold it and stuff like that and it was really amazing. Then as I was headed back, you know, this, uh, uh, this person came into that store, I was heading out and I looked at them, I thought, I remember you from somewhere and um, it was a very... Uh, a striking young man and he the first thing when I passed him it just it said out loud that he was a soul sucker he was a soul sucker and I thought okay that's really interesting so I didn't think nothing of it and I remember then that same night he was in my dream and he was a soul sucker like that's what they do they can enter your dreams 
and they're sort of like a bit of black holes, by the way. And when I passed them, I, f I had, it's funny because I could literally feel like a sort of pull. And um, so I, oops, there's, here, let me turn that off. Do you want to stop that for a second? So uh, uh, when I had passed this, uh, this young man, I had felt a sort of, like I said, a, a, but it, it, sort of like, a, 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 how do you call it, a succession force, a, um, a bit like, I thought, oh, from energetically, and I thought, okay, so I, I remember enforcing my shield and literally kicking that off of, and I thought, okay, this is really interesting, he looks very healthy, but there's something, just something there, so later that night, I went to sleep as normal, and astrally, he was in my astral, and he was literally in his form and it was very interesting because he wasn't uh, uh, the 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 had some young boy anymore he was a bit almost almost as if he was a bit like decaying or something like that and i started speaking to him and that's when he started to tell me that he was a soul sucker and he had some sort of name for it and apparently there uh, uh they are some sort of, um, I, I can't say species, I'm say beings that literally just suck energy wherever they go and they can just suck entire uh, soul orbs. And so that was very interesting. So I, um, I had an interaction with him of speaking to him and telling him that I didn't want him in my presence. And I remember they can, that he was a bit, non-compliant with my wishes and so I had to kick him out astrally uh, very powerful because he did definitely try to they try, in, in astral when I've met a soul sucker they definitely try to latch onto you and start absorbing you and so I definitely got rid of him um, I hadn't really thought about soul what I call soul soul suckers or soulless people until recently and I was um, I saw some article about it and then I um, I remembered about all that incident that happened to me. And then, uh, you know what, I had years ago, I had told people around me, people exist that don't have souls. And I think nobody back then really believed it because I, I'm so different. I just come out and say this stuff. I was, uh, then I was uh, very close to somebody who uh, was a friend of mine. And uh, this person seemed a bit like almost just overwhelmingly nice and kind and generally I'm used to being rather uh, uh, well treated and rather you know by people around me and we were we were um, sort of uh, uh, speaking one day and I just noticed some something very strange from them I had got a flash that they were in the past they were connected to the druids and they were connected to black magic and that in the past they had in their past life they had uh done some horrendous uh, deeds of taking people's lives and i thought oh goodness that's that's just you know for me when i see stuff like this i it immediately shocks me a bit and then i'll pull back and uh, i didn't I'm not, conf I, I, you know, I'm able to see stuff into people's past lives that sometimes they're not able to see, and I keep a lot of stuff to myself. Well, I decided that I wasn't going to confront this person with this information. The universe decided to, to give me this information. It in no way told me I needed to confront this person. It was showing me for my own safety and for my own uh, knowledge of the, about this person. I, you know, I, I live a very spiritual life along with trying to manage a 3D life and, you know, like do girly things along with, you know, I can be, literally be sitting in a nail salon and have all sorts of downloads come to me or see all sorts of things. So I'm trying to manage those too. So I thought, no, oh, in no way do I need to like tell this person that the universe showed me I didn't have to. 
you know, with me too trying to balance the 3D life, I was like, oh, I'll give this person the benefit of the doubt that, you know, they're not, that it's okay, that maybe they've got past that karmic block, you know, from something they did horrible in their past lives. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna give the, I, this person is really cool to me. I'm not kidding you. I, I usually, I'm, I'm, I, I know it's a terrible thing to say, but I'm quite spoiled from, people around me, they're really kind to try to make sure I'm okay. And I know they went, know that I've been through a lot as a child. So they kind of try to dote on me and stuff like that. And I, I'm i very um, um, open that I have a, 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 I do have that inner child that needs all that, a lots of more love because I didn't get it as a kid. So I'm, I'm accepting of myself and even that I have to take myself, care of myself a bit more than normal people because I didn't get that as a child. So, you know, I only let people who are really cool with me in my presence because I do lots of stuff for people. I'll do all sorts of stuff, so I only accept the same back. And I really, really just was like, passed that up. I, I saw that the universe told me this and I I still was like, okay, I'll, I saw that, but you know what? I'm sort of gonna like throw that on the back, in the back, I'm not even gonna think about that, you know? I... <laughs> I want to continue speaking to this person. We were going to lunches and we were uh, just hanging out and it was like this person would, would be fitting for everything in this world. They were kind, they were uh, charismatic, they were cool, you know, they were, they were over kind, they were uh, just knew about so much stuff and in the area I'm in and I really, really like that because back then I, it was harder to find people than it is now. And um, so I was really, really happy about that. And maybe, you know, I've, I, um, one day I accessed this person entirely and I kept throwing it be on the behind burner for a very long time. And they started to, I just started to feel, feel something synthetic or something not there from them. And so I decided one day to access them a little deeper. And I did. And what I did is I went through the layers. So this is it with the uh, body and the holographic thing and everything. You have uh, uh, the memories and stuff that are literally inlaid within the cells and within the uh, holographic of the body, literally projection. Think about it when you go inside a person's consciousness as layers. You, ha you hit the top memories, you hit their emotions and stuff like that. And then in the end, if you keep diving, it's almost like diving in the sea. Um, you keep diving down and down and down to you at the bottom. And then that's where you have the person's literal soul. And I've, when it, 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 I've been there lots of times and uh, where I went that deep into a person. So I went through the layers. So you have all the layers, you know, there's programs that are where food to eat to keep the body alive. So you've got all these different layers of things that are all done into the, the um, uh, these layers are all done to make the person, you know, so you can see them sitting here. I, I went down and I remember where I should have accessed this soul. I accessed blackness in such a deep blackness in a, a literal black hole. Um, it was a very, very frightful feeling. And I remember I pulled myself out of there very quickly. And I did that while I was in front of this person. And this person was supposed to be asleep. They were awake, literally. They had somehow, when I closed my eyes and went into that state, they were somehow, when I opened my eyes, their eyes were open literally in front of me. And they literally looked at me straight in the face and said, you know now, and I was like, okay, this is a bit too much for me to handle right now. Um, so then that's when I realized that uh, there are people who are soulless too, but in, in, the, in the depth that that was one of the first persons that I had accessed their psyche and went, psyche and went down the layers and found there was no soul because I, I have accessed people and I found very beautiful um, souls and stuff. This person knew there was something wrong with them. They were always telling me about how they needed to be redeemed or something like that. What I saw is that because in the past that they had taken the lives of humans, of people, they had a soul energy removed from them. 
I'm not quite sure how this goes. I think that some people are allowed are allowed back or souls are allowed back um, to maybe redeem themselves and they have to work very hard at doing lots of things for others so they can redeem soul energy because this is it. Your soul is literally energy. It is a mass amount of energy. And if it, think about it as a bank. Uh, if you keep harming, you keep losing energy. And it's not infinite. And since the world right now is blocked off from the divine energy, from the divine cosmic sort of uh, uh, um, what I call divine God energy, you have your your hair on earth with just sort of the energy in your body in a sort of <laughs> link that goes up to the cosmic divine God source energy. You must continuously do. Uh, good deeds and stuff and you're filling your bank up more and more since there's the veil you only have a, a stream coming in if you continuously use that and use that and use that you will become in deficit of it you're sort of spreading it around every everywhere and you are not using it wisely i think it's very possible to use all your soul energy in that way you still have that direct connection and by doing good deeds and turning things around you can um, regain mass amounts of soul energy i believe when people um, sometimes people that die probably from lack of their, from using up their soul energy and it's not even in this realm anymore, you know, it's pulled out of the body so that the, your body can't be animated anymore. There's lots of different aspects and facets to what goes on with these things. Um, do soulless people exist? Yes, they do. I had some questions of whether drugs or stuff, um, make somebody soulless I would think murder and different stuff can do that I do believe and then the body becomes literally a capsule uh, for negative entities because you have not taken control of your body you have not real uh, you have not taken control of your um, uh, self you have literally wasted yourself around so you can then you've lost so much soul energy that then you become a bit of a empty corpse walk-in corpse your, that your body's there, your soul's not there, and essentially then entities, negative entities can come take that over because without the soul guarding your body. So yes, do I believe this happens? I do. I looked at murder, I've looked at murderers and there was, I could see there was no soul in their eyes. Um, I just could see that they were full of different lower entities who had acted out through them. Um, that's my theory on, on soulless people. I also believe that for specific reasons, there are bodies that are made up without souls. I don't believe that they uh, can live very long. I, like I, I, I should maybe speak a bit about cloning and clones. You have to realize is here, maybe I can take this as an example. You have to realize when they clone somebody, let's say this is, uh, uh, this is the person they're cloning here in red. This is the, the person, the, the original body, original DNA. This, this body has its soul energy that animates it. Without any soul energy, this body would not be animated. This is the clone. The clone has been cloned from the direct soul energy. This clone here, with this person here, they have uh, their soul energy, so they're animated. This clone is, will be literally absorbing from the first source energy to be alive and to be animated. Without the first source, this clone could not survive, literally. Um, this is how clonin works. When you clone a body, you have to have a main source of energy. Otherwise, there's no soul essence in it to animate it. So essentially, uh, with cloning, there, that's the reason that there's a huge issue with cloning. And I know lots of people have their theories about cloning. I've had lots of experiences with uh, um, cloning. I know quite a bit about it. And it's funny because I see so many people have all sorts of insane theories and they don't realize it's kind of quite simple, the, the basics of cloning. Well, the thing is, is that when they do make a second body sometimes, will not survive very long. 
why this body it, it cannot, uh, the soul energy in this body cannot continuously keep this body fully animated and animate this consciousness and body too. And if you've cloned five or six people from the same thing, imagine the strain it would be on the original DNA. This energy, energy strain would be huge. This is just some basics. So essentially, what would the clone be good for? It'd be great to make, start up a body. They need the spark of energy from the original to start up a body. They know that, well, this body will, this person will die out very quickly or, or be waste very quickly because of the energy being used, you know, from both. It cannot support that. So it's great for them. Cloning is great for them because what it does makes the second body that this con if this consciousness is strong enough soul energy it will literally pull back from the second body by the way that's another thing that can happen what they den then do is they've used the magic spark from the original dna to create clone they take the clone and they put entities into it yes this is how they're bringing uh, different entities into this world too is through cloning they're putting entities into it. This is allowing this entity who could not get a bar body on a karmic level, they're do, they, they do different stuff to pull it into this body. And this allows this entity to live in this body for a certain amount of time. This body can become directly disconnected from the first one. And then it can absorb, become a sort of energy vampire and absorb energy from everybody around it to survive, by the way. Those are some of the basics. It would be soulless, by the way. It could never have the soul, the 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 soul, the, the the soul energy that the original had. So, essentially, clones are also soulless. They could not, and any of them who are streaming any energy from the original, will not have that long. So, clones are also somebody, some uh, thing else that are soulless. Um, you know, they may continue absorbent energy, I'd say maybe up to three, four months from the original, and then the original usually cuts it off, or um, essentially the original will die, and then there's another, then this clone will not stay alive. So yes, there are many soulless clones walking around outside that have a body, uh, 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 sorry, bodies in th that are, uh, have entities in them, just made for the mere fact that they have the darker forces want bodies to be. I think in Lord of the Rings it kind of shows this. They were doing sort of like the cloning thing and all those weirdly weird things, and they were all like lower entities that were in them. So Lord of the Rings shows so so many things. So essentially, yes, there are different variations of soulless, along with clones and people and stuff like that. Um, I do not believe. Uh, you know, it's, this is a very touchy subject to go into because I know that uh, some people who are soulless, they need to find people who are full of energy to uh, have kid children with. They do not have the divine spark, so they cannot create the divine spark to create a child. So they definitely have to vamp the victim uh, um, that they want, if they want to have a child, they have to find somebody who has a mass amount of energy they have to vamp, vamp that big victim, get enough energy to create the child along with that victim, have enough energy to create the soul source spark to create even a child. Um, that This has happened to a couple of women that I know that were high energy and that were targeted. Uh, so there's all sorts of levels of things going on here when it comes to that. I, um, I should finish up soon because I've got to run. <laughs> I'm very late today on many things. But hopefully I did speak a bit about uh, some things that will help people out. And, you know, maybe next time I'll speak a bit more about clones and a bit more about those sort of things. Because I think I've kept a bit quiet because there's so much um, insanity that surrounds these subjects. And they're quite actually basically simple. That's the thing. We're like making piles of crap for basically very, very simple um, subjects. And if you know how energy works, you will quickly, quickly understand the basics of these things. 
But I did a, <laughs> I want to wish everybody a great week. <laughs> this is a, the end of Sunday here, Sunday evening. I wanted to wish everybody a great week and I am doing life coaching. So if you need any help, I am definitely here. Um, I really, really love life coaching because I can mix doing energy work with helping straighten up people's diets and everything like that. And I had done that some years ago and I think I kind of just stopped a bit. And lately it's been really rewarding doing it again. Plus I can just use all the knowledge I have on all different levels in helping people out whether they want to astral travel or whether they want to become healthier, stuff like that. So it's really amazing. I think my calling in life is a bit, I don't necessarily ever think it's to be speaking about these things. I do it without probably um, thinking that it'll go anywhere very much. So I really don't care if it will or it won't. But the thing is, is at least I get to reach out to some people who really need help and I get to help them out. And for me, I really work on doing my best to be a giver in life. And that's the thing. If I can give back to people, that's my major thing. So I want to thank everybody who watches my blogs and wish everybody happiness and love and joy. And <laughs> thank everybody.